On our second full day in Yucatan we decided to explore a little closer to home. So we set off for the Santa Teresa Road, through the little village of Chemuel. We were looking for a quiet place to walk, so were very pleased when we came across this track, blocked at the mouth, which purported to lead to a defunct resort area. Our first sighting of Rufus Browd Pepperstrike on this vacation was very welcome. Other birds, all lurking in the shadows but allowing some views or at least identifiable calls, included squirrel cuckoo, rufous-tailed hummingbird, white-breasted wren, wood thrush, and our old friends, hooded and magnolia warbler. Great kiskadees and social flycatchers were being particularly vocal. A treat were good views of the wonderfully named northern beardless duranulate. There are two squirrel species in the Yucatan, and we were to see them both. Today was the turn of the endemic Yucatan squirrel, a large animal even bigger than American grey squirrel. This was the first time in the holiday that we saw stationary butterflies. It is, of course, great to see any butterflies in January, but so far they had avoided our cameras. Here, a few beauties decided to allow a snatched shot or two. The narrow strip of sky above the track and between the thickly vegetated hedges was full of iron dines. We found Vaux Swift, grey-breasted martins and cave swallows hawking for insects above the track. We'd enjoyed our slow walk along the track, now we had to decide on somewhere else to go. The problem with the Yucatan is that most of the wild places are not really accessible. We had heard of a monkey sanctuary near Coba that seemed to be as close to a nature reserve as they had. The Punta Laguna monkey sanctuary had trails, slippery because wet, but it also offered zip lining. An odd choice for a sanctuary. Still, making our way down to the laguna, we did come across our first boat build flycatchers of the trip. It was midday, and so the worst time to try to find birds. Alongside the boat builds we also got more great kiskadees, social flycatchers, and tropical kingbirds. It seemed like the flycatchers were the only species active. Maybe there would be some birds on the lake itself. Avoiding the rickety-looking observation tower, we finally came to a small jetty, where local kids were splashing in the clear waters of the lake. It seemed that a guided tour would include a canoe ride across to the far bank, where there were some Mayan ruins. We duly noted pied-billed grebe, great blue heron and great egret on the lake. The muddy trails led to this odd shrine in a clearing just off the main path. This was a monkey sanctuary, supposedly for Central American spider monkey and black howler monkey, so we were quite pleased to come across the former species. I'm not sure what they make of ziplining tourists in their sanctuary though. We headed off, via the Coba Lake, where we found the same species as yesterday, and then back to the hotel and our balcony. Tomorrow we were heading out on a long day, starting with getting up before 4am. We were heading to Rio Legatos and hoping to get our only lifers of the trip, so a quiet evening and an early night was the plan. There was still time to greet our hooded warbler, the indefatigable magnolia warbler and, of course, the fabulous yellow-throated warbler in our tree. They were joined by house wren, white-eyed vireo, great kiskadee, and social flycatcher for a fine end to the day. A tiny but colorful spider was a spiner-backed orb weaver. A butterfly was a dingy purple wing a bit of a sad name for a beautiful and subtly marked insect. We like bugs and butterflies too. It's not just about the birds, 